Keeping the game exciting between major events and set releases is a challenge given the current organized play structure. We take some time to muse about what it could take to keep the game exciting in these slow times. We also have a couple of Across the Galaxy spoilers fresh from Italy to talk about. This is episode 106, Driving Engagement Between Events. You have been well trained. No, you don't have to carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, do not. I'm not afraid. Oh. There is no threat. Folks, I am back. Howdy. Kim's back. Matt's back. I've been here. <laughs> Mr. Been. Nice Guy is back. <laughs> Mr. Nice Guy. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, we had a, a last-minute substitute, um, but we're always happy to have Matthew Scott on the show. And I generally, sure. Matthew's filling tag in for me. In. So we tag I, him in. We'll I rarely him. get a chance to actually talk to Matt. He's usually like me instead of... Yeah. Sure. Sometimes he's me. Sometimes he's you. Well, yeah. sometimes... I can kind of do it all. <laughs> he's he does good a, impressions of all of us. He's probably yeah. got a bunch of wigs in the back. He's like, hmm, oh, where's my Kim wig for the night? <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're here with a show. Um, I, I It's been a while since I've been here. Uh, I know we took a week off, and then uh, last week I wasn't here. Because, um, you know, I had a baby. I mean, not me personally, but now I... You, you know, did I, not. I'm personally... I am. There I'm, was someone else that did more of that work, buddy. Well, <laughs> yes. Yes, there was. But uh, but I'm sure you were very supportive and helpful. <laughs> well, I'm off. I'm out of work for a while, um, which is which is a nice thing because it's, uh, it's, it's a lot more work than I expected. But that's, no, no one ever knows what to expect with a child, right? No. Um, but excited to be back and talking to you guys about some Star Wars Destiny uh, in, cool. in this time frame, in this period, uh, as we're starting to ramp up towards Across the Galaxy. Uh, but we're still, we're not really in that heavy spoiler season yet. Uh, not enough cards to start testing out the new decks that we don't even know exist. Um, but yeah. Uh, but Kim, I think it looks like you saw mm -hmm. something. You saw something? I did. Although I'm going to preempt this with, you guys know how I live in this noisy little town. It is harvest season. I cannot promise there will not be a combine go by and make a whole lot of noise. So <laughs> I'm just apologizing up front because it will probably happen. Um, Did you guys see this um, Dr. Afra DJ battle droid deck? that won a store championship and I'm sorry I forget where and I'm trying to look to see where that was um because we how long have we been talking about DJ not being viable that he just showed up and you didn't see a deck and so this is a weird combo but it did win um I won't go through the whole your destiny did a nice write up about it if you want to read the whole deck analysis but it's only 3 dice wide so single die each one of those characters and then it has a battle droid? Is it that? Battle? It has a battle droid. So, yeah, Afro DJ and a yeah. battle droid. So, red, yellow. And I don't see. Wow. Okay, I'll rattle these off. So, it's by. So, events were by any means crash landing, dangerous maneuver, electroshock, entangle. He doesn't like you. In the crosshairs, the best defense. <laughs> I'm not surprised by that at all. Mm -hmm. Truth. Under attack, and then supports were triple zero, backup muscle, which we haven't seen in, in a while, BT1, bubble shield, climate disruption array, and streetwise. I'm surprised you wouldn't have, um, so you can roll out more battle droids. Yeah. What is that? Uh, the landing craft. Thank you. Thing. Like, I was drawing a blank on what it was. Yeah, but it, it's just all, it's all events. It's all removal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, you're you're basically trading out. Not I mean. So there's, it's got the mechanics that the Snoke Afro battle droid had. But mm -hmm. instead of Snoke, I mean, so it's got, of course, the, the BT-1 and the triple zero. Uh, Which is super helpful cycle. if you can get those out early. Right, and then you've got DJ, who, um, even though he only can fit one die in this combination... Uh, deals one indirect damage to your opponent for each die you remove. So, you know, paying a heavy removal suite um, is just as good as a die in itself in terms of damage. Mm -hmm. So, that's interesting. I mean, like you said, we've, I think <clears throat> DJ's been wanting to make a scene and he show up every now and then, but hasn't done real well. 
Um, but obviously, uh, this deck has seen some success. It's definitely one of those things that make you go, hmm. Like, I, I feel like it's... And in this time when things are so quiet, it's a great opportunity to look for experimental decks like this, I think. Um, so yeah. kudos to... Um, it was Tim Meads that won the store championship with this. So kudos to him. That's a, a pretty original, th well-thought-out deck, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of goes to that idea, too, is now that there are, the card pool is bigger and decks have things that they're trying to do that mm -hmm. you can even, you can take half of one deck and then create some new sort of sauce on the other side so you know at least half your decks tried and tested you know the the afro exactly cycle mm -hmm. uh, you know that's going to work and then you uh, bring in this you know dj side with these uh, uh all these events that can remove multiple dice which is very important especially to make dj do some massive damage so uh yep. interesting yeah, so that was just one of those, like, I, I found that to be, I don't know, probably one of the most interesting, there's a lot of cool things happening, there was a lot of, um, uh-huh, yep, nationals and stuff this week, but that that was probably the one, one of the big decks that kind of caught my eye as something different to, yeah. um, could be kind of fun to throw in your local event, um, yeah, so, just wanted, wanted to get the word out in case you guys hadn't saw that, because it looks like, it looks like it's a fun deck to play. It does look fun uh so matt you've got an exciting yeah. weekend coming up yeah we have the uh the texas galactic open coming up this mm -hmm. saturday um which looks like it's going to be basically an all-day event so nice. um yeah <clears throat> it's kind of a like ffg star wars game um open event for, for the state so they're nice. playing armada they're playing legion they're playing x-wing 2.0 and then, of course, we're there playing Destiny. So uh, it should be pretty exciting. Um, we'll see. It, and that's I don't, it's not ahead. an official FFG run no. of it, right? It's a, it's a fan thing. <clears throat> Correct. No, Although cool. FFG has been kind enough to support it. So as I understand it, they have sent us two uh, spot gloss executioners mm -hmm. for one and two, which is pretty nice. And then uh, a handful of hidden motive extended arts. Oh, cool. Um, it's also super nice. So um, kind of looking forward to to that. Nice. Yeah. So are you are you just are you gonna play just in Destiny or are you gonna do any other events while you're there? So they all kind of overlap. Um, uh... otherwise I might try to like, you know, do X Wing also. But, yeah. Uh, not gonna be That's feasible. So I'm just gonna do Destiny. Cool. What are you gonna take? You know yet? Uh so I have limited time to deck build so i just end up taking kind of the same thing a lot of times so if i had to guess i'm going to say i'll probably end up doing kylo price yeah that seems I pretty just feel solid really though. comfortable with that deck i feel like yeah uh, even if it doesn't take me to the end i feel like i can do reasonably well with it mm -hmm. um, cool rather than trying to whip up something new so that's fair and uh, and I know this, this is something you guys have been doing uh, locally. Um, you guys have had very much success with uh, some some form of a league format. I've been trying to follow it, but I'm you know I can't play myself. Yeah. So. <laughs> so we did a the bounty hunter league, um, which was an artificery idea. They put it, they published that a, a while ago, um, and they actually along with the article that they have about it they sell a couple of mats one is a bounty mat and one is a hunter mat which you know look pretty nice although you could do whatever for that so the idea is every week you get together and you basically have a little tournament um and whoever wins the, the one week is the bounty the next week um oh, okay and you sign the mat every time that you that you win you sign the bounty mat uh, and every time that you get matched up against the bounty in the tournament and you play the hunter and you win, then you sign the hunter mat. And at the end of it, uh, whoever has signed the bounty mat the most times wins the bounty mat. Whoever signed the hunter mat the most times wins the hunter. So we've been kind of mixing it up with a bunch of different formats rather than just standard. So a couple of the nights have been draft. We've done some pauper events where you can't run legendaries we've done some faceless events where you can't run unique cards just all kinds of stuff it's actually been a lot of fun it's been a good way to kind of change it up so yeah that's cool yeah so that. we finished that this week so yeah this is the getting out there and playing that's 
it's important in time. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Exactly. That's great. Awesome. Um, so we might as well go ahead and move into, uh, there's not a whole lot of news, but about an hour <laughs> and a half ago, um, our friends from Down Under kind of shared uh, some information that, come out of, that has recently come out of Italy uh, in terms of some spoilers. So uh, let's get to it. Let me take that back, huh? Neil, find what you need. <laughs> so there's a couple of cards that came out of a, uh, I think it's Bad Destiny is the name of the podcast in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, so, so we have these Italian versions of these cards. And I'll see if I can pull up there. Yeah, uh, thanks, Google Translate, because <laughs> right? I saw the image and I went, well, that looks cool. Don't know what it says. Um, we need yes. a... So there's a there's a couple of them here. Um, so thanks to Destiny Down Under for uh, you know Google translating uh, these bad boys. Um, they talked about some other ones too. So I'm wondering if this came out as an article in Italy, maybe, and mm. these cards were just maybe. on there as or you know or they could be uh, you know the Italy branch of FFG is dishing out some spoilers to their content creators over there. Who knows. Um, I'm sure someone will let us know at some point in time exactly where these came from. Uh, but um, the first one of these is uh, loosely translated to drop your weapons, uh, which is an interesting uh, red villain event. Um, and it's two resources to play. And, you know, of course, dealing with Google Translate, we're not 100% sure exactly what the wording and, of course, with these card games, uh, one different word can ch can drastically change the the effectiveness mm -hmm. or play of a card. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this a bit, but I it seems like um, you have if you have two red characters, uh, so maybe spot two red characters, mm -hmm. okay, and choose one weapon on two different characters and put back every weapon chosen to their owner's hand. So it seems like it's like an easy pickings for weapons. Mm hmm. Like Except it, it returns the the upgrade. That's what it hand. seems like, right? It seems like yeah. it, it returns the upgrade, not the dice. So uh, it's actually um, pretty killer because we don't have. Mm -hmm. We're still pretty low on the removal of physical cards off the table, right? We have plenty of dice removal, mm -hmm. but actually taking a card mm -hmm. off the table, um, the the options are still pretty low it was considering we're going into set number six which is which can be a little frustrating um mm -hmm. so it, i think it's interesting it's gonna so you know like i said red villain events um you know blue is still kind of the color of choice for for events these days so it'll be interesting to see um if we get some bolstering of the red uh especially for the villains in this set either of you have any uh, thoughts on potentially what this could do Yeah, so I I don't know. It seems like it could be obviously a super good card, right? Um, right. Because ideally, the play is that your opponent has rolled in two of their characters uh, that have weapons on them, and you play this for two, effectively removing two of their dice, which is good, and sending those upgrades back to their hand, which is good, and then they would have to pay to play them again Right, and they're not going to get any value out of them this turn because they've already rolled in their characters, right? So that's the ideal play. And then, in, in if it works out that way, then two resources—that's a crazy good bargain. Um, the problem is the spot two red characters, so that mm -hmm. means you have to have two red characters, uh, and they have to be alive when this card would be useful. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I don't know. But you know what? I see this being kind of good in uh, in like a three or four wide villain vehicle deck. If you can fit two red, two or more red characters into a three or more, four wide villain vehicle deck, um, then you probably have the resources to play it, and that would be enough to set your opponent back pretty significantly. I feel like vehicle decks only need like a little bit of an, an edge something. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's It could be good. We'll see. Yeah, I was actually looking to see if that was it is villain. That's what I couldn't remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. it it seems like it may end up being a meta call. Yeah, you're gonna have to know uh, if what's going to be played. Um, 
to see if this is even viable or you know is it good this if this becomes a widespread card to be played it could drive uh more singles more one ofs and deck builds um but i don't see this currently being a card we're gonna see a lot of it just seems well and maybe it is that cost because it's so situational but mm -hmm. to get rid of two weapons off a character for only two resources seems ridiculously cheap yeah even with mm -hmm. even with the two spot two red characters so i i don't know hmm. please don't show know me an english version so that i can understand this. <laughs> <laughs> or right. if someone who speaks fluent italian could translate this who also speaks fluent english that would be great right yeah because i don't trust google i mean i do for <laughs> my searches but not google translate right <laughs> for sure so I mean, it's a. But it's interesting. It's interesting. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, I I can't. I would be surprised if we don't see the English version of this hit pretty soon. But uh, I would think so too. So hopefully, and there's uh, one other card that they they talked about a bunch of different cards in their YouTube video. Um, you can go to, um, you can go to the Italian uh, Facebook group. You can go to Bad Destiny, um, which is the Italian group. Uh, it's all there's all in Italian. Then of course Destiny Down Under. Has uh has taken a look at these two cards we haven't seen yet in English. Um, the other one is uh, where we're gonna call it say flame shooter. Uh, seems to be the the best translation we have so far. <laughs> um, two resources to play. It's a yellow neutral upgrade weapon. Um, and it is uh one melee, two melee, two melee for a dollar, one disrupt. Uh, there are two blank sides, which is never mm -hmm. exciting. Um. Yellow character only, uh, and here's you know loose translation from oh. Italian. Uh, action: You may resolve melee sides of this die as indirect, increasing its value by one. Interesting. So you could roll I into a. You could roll into a two melee, and then uh, as an action, it's not a power action; it's just a straight up action. Um, you could resolve the die as three indirect. So that's. I like the versatility. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yep. I I would agree with that. I think that being versatile and it's a reasonable cost. So Ma Matthew Scott is not excited. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you? Um, hate it? I don't. I. It has two blanks, which is not good. It has three base sides, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it has a disrupt side, which I usually don't want to see. So effectively, three blanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and. It, the action is interesting, like situationally, it's great, um, but but because it's an action, you won't be able to resolve modified melee damage or modified indirect damage with it, which is kind of annoying. Mm. If it wasn't an action, if it just said mm -hmm. like the melee sides of this die can be resolved as indirect, increasing the value by one, well then it's great. You know, stick that in a deck with some uh, indirect damage sides, modified indirect damage sides, and now. I have another base indirect, and I get to resolve it for one more, but it doesn't <laughs> work that way. It's an action, so I don't mm. know. It's fine. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Now, I'm if any of you, like, so I, when I, a woman I, says I, it's fine, I think Matthew Scott meant, like, <laughs> the fine version of when your girlfriends or wives or sisters or whatever go, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he meant right there. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's gonna stay. In, it's gonna live in my binder if I had to guess. That's, <laughs> we'll see. I'd love to be. Somebody wrong. write that down. Jason, <laughs> have your board of predictions. We'll revisit oh, yeah. this once the set's out with with Mr. What's, nice Guy and see how sure. feels. Once, once this is in every meta deck, then we should revisit <laughs> it. And be like, remember how every deck runs two flamethrowers and two flame shooters now? You were wrong. <laughs> all right i i you know i'm so digital these days i don't have paper i'll write it down then i'll add it to my document <laughs> on uh on 10 16 uh matthew scott says the flame shooter it's is, fine it is fine fine, it's fine. In, in very plain written letters yeah. it is <laughs> fine. fine it's like courier font <laughs> lowercase okay great well so uh, so that's all the news is fit to print which is actually nice that we actually had some news fit to print um because otherwise we didn't have a whole lot of news no i i have not had a chance to review like i said i knew the this weekend and i apologize that we haven't 
had much of an opportunity to kind of see the reports out of that. I didn't get a chance to see what kind of what uh, what took those. Although uh, the uh, which one was it had 160 attendees. Uh, Spain. I think it was a Spanish. I think it was a Spanish wow. national. So that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought that was incredibly awesome. So th- for people, th- the game's not dead. <laughs> No, and I, I, I keep hearing jokes about that. At least it's not in Europe. I don't know about the state, but it's, you know, 160 people turning out for that. That's amazing. It yeah, is that's interesting great. to see such a uh, large assemblage of Destiny players in Europe. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the guys at your Destiny are amazing, and they, they provide some great, um, amazing coverage. And, you know, their website is full of uh, wonderful deck analysis of, Anybody who's won something, um, they've got an analysis for of that particular deck and how it's played. Uh, yep. So, and, that, and, that, and they also have all the tournament reports from the nationals. So, um, I, I think it's we're kind of remiss that you know once our national season is over, we tend to stop looking out mm-hmm. that direction. Yep. We look their direction until our nationals, and then once our nationals happens, <laughs> then we're not looking over there because oh, we I, don't have anything yeah. else that we're. We're we're not going to be in this meta anymore as as a as a mm-hmm. player base, so. But there's still some good ideas. I mean, I, I still think it's worth paying attention. I mean, just because it's across the the ocean, doesn't mean that there's still not some the proper some term tips and tricks to pick up pond, across the pond across the pond. Mm-hmm. But yes. keep up the good. I mean, uh, I love the guys at Your Destiny, so they they do a great job. So keep up the good work, chaps. <laughs> chaps. Chaps. So, yeah, so uh, let us go ahead and talk a little bit about our topic for the week after a word from our sponsors. You know, Mike, I just can't seem to get the cards I need in the booster packs I've bought. I'm still missing a Mother Talzin, a Darth Maul, and I need some more battle droids. That five wide droid deck isn't going to build itself. And I have all these extra Yodas. Seriously, Kim, I told you, check out Armada Games. You can buy and sell Destiny cards on their website, shoparmada.com. It's just a few simple clicks and bam, you are done. I used it just the other day. And now I got two, count them, two mall savers heading my way. Hey, what are you guys talking about? We're in the middle of a break here. Jason, you know how you've got all those extra cards from all those booster boxes you open? Mike says you can sell them online super easy. No way, seriously? How? I've got to make room before this next set comes out. Jason, whether you're new to the game or a seasoned vet, Armada Games has just what you're looking for. You can buy and sell your Destiny singles all from the comfort of your living room, pre-order the latest sets of boosters, and find the droids you are looking for. You can also check out their selection of Destiny accessories. And you'll get free shipping on orders over $75. For an even better deal, be sure to use the coupon code THECHANCECUBE and receive 5% off your Destiny purchase. Visit their website at shoparmada.com. Armada Games. Get in here and game. But you know what I always say. Speak softly and drive a big tank. I don't know what it is, man. I just dance. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We're back. Now, how long were we Kim. back before or after I said that? Uh, we were back before you said that, but I enjoyed that I, moment immensely. I can't hear, I can't, I don't know when it's over, so I just and I forget to start counting at the beginning of it so that I don't know how long it's been going. <laughs> so then I just dance until Jason starts talking. So, there was an article uh, that came out about four or five weeks ago. Uh, was it that to- long? It's it's been a while. Oh, okay. It's it's been at least a month. Um, about the state of the game from an organized play, uh, I don't want to say competitive stance, but you can. Um, and I would have to say, and, and I don't know where this conversation is going. I have I have some ideas, but I'll let you guys run with it. Um, <laughs> we're in this. We always face this time period. We always talk about it. It's always it's a struggle for sometimes for content creators to come up with content to talk about. Um, we're, we're gearing up for a new set, but we don't have a whole lot about to talk about. And Mm -hmm. there's not a big competitive scene, especially in the United States, uh, to continue to follow. And even if you followed the European scene, the, it's, the meta hasn't evolved a whole bunch to make it really that exciting. And since no one in the States is following 
it really because there's no events that are driving it. How do we continue to maintain the excitement mm-hmm. around the game um, without Fantasy Flight game support? Because I think that's where we're at, right? They, we know what their, we know what mm-hmm. their OP plan is going to be. They got store champs, they got regionals, they've got nationals, mm-hmm. and then they've got the worlds. And there's always this lull period between each of those seasons. Um, and, and we're in mm-hmm. one right now. We're waiting for Across the Galaxy, and then we'll hit the regionals. And then it'll get really exciting again. There'll be lots of chatter. There'll mm-hmm. be lots of discussion. Um, but how do we keep it, one, exciting for the casual player? Uh, and two, how do we keep it exciting for the um, competitive player as well uh, in, in any sorts of realms? Um, and so, Matthew, your, your area is bustling it seems like you guys have a pretty regular play group and i don't know and i don't know if the answer lies with the stores or if it lies with tournament organizers who leverage the stores because that's always a challenge mm-hmm. right you have to have a store who's really supportive mm-hmm. of this game i am rambling Ooh, and i have i have thoughts on that but we yeah. can i feel like that's later in the discussion okay um so <laughs> go ahead kim please i don't know that i want to start out on that but fine we will um this is this is this this full disclosure these are just my opinions and thoughts. I'm not trying to tick anybody off. Um, my neck of the woods is pretty dry. It is very quiet. It is somewhat complicated to get people together to play Destiny. I'm even at fault for some of that because, well, if I go all the way out to the shop, there might be three people there and we can barely get anything firing. And so I th- you can't necessarily rely on this. is You can't rely on the store to create your Destiny scene for you. And I think a lot of us maybe have done that because because the stores traditionally have kind of created that scene for games like Magic um, and other other games like that. I feel like with Destiny, because we have these laws, there's not laws like this in Magic. Sorry, I don't I don't really think they're they they produce product more frequently. I think, um, and they run three different types of 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 games. So there's always something going on with that. Magic is a money maker for the store. Until we start showing up and sitting down and playing different content or different types of games, Destiny is not always a money maker for the store. Mm. So if we have to take ourselves there and we have to take an active role in the community to keep it going, you can't expect that store to do it for you because they're only going to they're going to give you maybe some packs. Well, I already have all the cards. I don't want to go get more packs. Well, from a business perspective, does it make sense for the store to give you anything else? No. Like, they have to make money, too. So they, they can't mm-hmm. give you store credit. They're not going to give you other things like that. If you want an active community, you have to show up and help create one. Um, and, and I'm preaching to myself, too, because I can't always get to my, my night on Wednesday nights. Um, but I think that's where it starts. You can't just go, well, Destiny's dead in my neighborhood because my store didn't want to run it. You can't place the blame there. I mean, that's that's Kim's soapbox mo- soapbox moment. But <laughs> I appreciate that. I mean, I, I I think there's some validity to it, and the the call to action to anyone who wants their scene to be better is make your scene better, right? Get out there and play, and and it's and it's can't... not easy. I right. get it. It's not easy, especially if it's gone quiet and you got three or four people showing up. It's hard, and you have to really dig in and and show up and be there because that's what kind of stops people. If they're hesitant going, well, there's not going to be very many people there tonight. Maybe I'll just go home and watch what's on TV and Netflix or something. So that's, stop that's... binge watching your favorite shows. <laughs> that's, the <laughs> that's the motto. That's the mantra here. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, I think that's where it has to start. You, the people in the community, especially even still, we still have new players coming in, mm-hmm. have to go aren't going to buy into it if people show up once or twice in a while. I mean, if, if, I mean, I, I don't even know, like we even were like, are we having a tournament? We don't know. Like we, you, you just got, you've got to communicate and buddy up with the other people in your community and, and try to make it happen and just commit to each other, start a league, start a fun casual night, start looking at trilogy events, start thinking about, um, Oh Lord, I forgot what it's called when it's all the cards. When now that we rotate, because we haven't talked about it much. Infinite. Infinite. We're not even talking about that yet, and it becomes a thing with this next rotation. So how are you planning to incorporate that in your local scene? 
Mm-hmm. How are you going to make all that money that you invested at the beginning of this game? How are you going to make it continue to be worthwhile <laughs> for you instead of sitting in a binder putting your bicycle spokes? It's going to be right there with Flame Shooter. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what part passed it? No Darth Vader, no flame shooter, <laughs> but I apparently have feelings about this that I didn't realize I had feelings. About. <laughs> let, it, let it all out. This is Kim's therapy session. Ooh, oh, wow. Playing Star Wars Destiny. Uh, I, I agree. And there is, I think we all want to do more. And I think that's the challenge is time is always a challenge in the modern day. Uh, can we get out to the store? And if we can get out to the store, can we help develop uh things going on um i mean matthew it seems like you guys have had some great success with uh flipping up the format a little bit Mm -hmm. um at this at this place where you're doing this bounty hunter league do you is there an additional night in the week where it is just a standard play or is this the night that is uh rotating through so this basically uh this basically took over our regular weekly meetup so we meet on wednesday nights um and honestly it had been very difficult to get people there. We were in that kind of like two or three people show up, maybe. Um, I had personally made it a point to be there every week, even if even if nobody else showed up. Um, I was just going to be there so that nobody ever showed up for a destiny night to find nobody. But it was pretty it was pretty slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, Deso is in our is in our is in my local group. So for anybody who knows Deso from the Discord channels or anything. Um, and she basically took it upon herself to, to do the league, uh, the bounty hunter league. And she kind of organized it and worked with the store to get price support for it and stuff. Um, and that, and we just stuck it on Wednesday night because that's when people were already showing up. Um, we don't have a ton of people, but we're averaging six to eight per week. Um, it's and it's a bad. consistent group, so it's not bad. Mm-hmm. It's a lot better than it used to be because there's at least consistency, mm-hmm. even if it's not a large group. Uh, and and a couple of those players are new, which is great. Um, but yeah, we're kind of in this weird spot where a lot of the older players who have left have just moved on, and I don't see them coming back. So um, we're having to try to find new players. I think that's the trick, because we need to find sure. people who, who hadn't who haven't played before and decided that they're over the game for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. It's also kind of frustrating to talk to those players because as we know, the game is in a much better place now than when the majority of them left it. Mm -hmm. But it's really hard to sell them on that idea. (laughs) I agree. uh, They still kind of look at destiny and they're like, Oh, right. I remember that FN2199 game. That was the worst. Um, Well, there were challenges with product too. And and that didn't help. Yeah, you know what I mean. True. That was a challenge, and now there are new shiny things coming out mm-hmm. that are attra- that attract the te- the attention of CCG players. Sure, Transformers. Like I know- oh wait, sorry. Like Flame Shooter, um, <laughs> Keyforge. Like I just saw an advertisement yep. from my FLGS about Keyforge. I I anticipate that because because of the price point. Yep. Um, Transformers um, has mm-hmm. become. There's been some popularity with that in my local neck of the woods. Um, even yep. Team Covenant did a playthrough. It's an interesting game. Simple kind of... Uh, I think Zach uh, Bunn had mentioned it. It plays... It's it's simple to understand like Destiny can be, but it, it's got some slightly different mechanics. Um, so, so I know we've had, we've had a couple people <laughs> flip to that. Mm-hmm. So, those, I mean, those are challenges that you have to overcome. But I think they're typical challenges for, in a CCG. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Right? I mean, the the... Magic Part- aside, because, right? But... Magic, magic aside. I mean, Magic, Pokemon, and Yu Gi Oh are the three established pillars of customizable card games. Um, for whatever reason, I mean, they're those companies uh, do support those events very well from a competitive mm-hmm. standpoint, um, which is huge. Uh, and then you've got everything else, right? And Destiny is still among the everything else, and uh, it was it was very popular really fast, and then became. You know, like you said, there's lots of things that happened, and the game isn't a great place right now. How do we get? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is not a be- this is not a, an episode about getting players back into the game. This is an episode about keeping the game exciting, um, mm-hmm. but that is that is an element of, of it, right? So how do we? Um, I think the rotation is going to help. Honestly, the rotation is going to help get some people in because freshen it up. Um, it's going to. It's a good landing point. Yeah, mm-hmm. because cards people are frustrated with uh, most of them will be gone. Uh, we hope yeah. unless they get reprinted. They'll be more. 
There'll be more oh, suckers. Yeah. Always <laughs> <gonna be> funny. <laughs> if you think there's not going to be more cars you're going to be frustrated with, you're crazy. Green shooter. Yep. <laughs> yeah, see? There's already one that's fine. So there'll be more. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's an interesting idea uh, to to go into your local scene, talk to the store, um, get some sort of whatever, right? Get a league, get a, a weekly... I mean, leagues can be easy, right? Now we've tied Billy on the show a couple of times. He's talked about a league where they're, you know, they're keeping track of points, and it's, mm -hmm. it's not complex, but it is involved to get that set up. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a league like this bounty hunter starting. league you guys are doing, which is basically who won last week. Okay. Yeah. So I, I mean, honestly, a huge shout out to the to the people who who came up with that bounty hunter league. It's it's brilliant in its simplicity to track it. It really is like who That's won nice. it's on the mat <laughs> who's ahead it's on the mat like you you signed your name there's some number of ticks next to your name for you know how many times you've gotten to sign the mat whoever has the most at the end wins like it's just uh it's so simple um to to track which is really nice because leagues can be a pain they can be a chore mm -hmm. and especially sure. if the store isn't sure. running it you know if it falls on a community member to run it it can be a lot of work but the Bounty Hunter League is, is pretty straightforward. And nice. as a community, we kind of decide on the format for the week. And yeah, it's great. It's been good. It's been nice just to play the That's game awesome. differently. But yeah, it's been really good to see uh, to see so many faces back playing, you know? Sure. I think you I think you said something that really hit the nail on the head though, Matt, was that playing the game differently. And that's what it takes to keep it exciting is to, is to have those theme nights, those multiple formats, draft, um, trilogy, bounty leagues like those are some of the things those are the small things like i i know we're going to get into more detail as to more competitive type events but i think that's the small thing that you can do to start raising that excitement level with it mm -hmm. and then you start building a community and then you can start looking at bigger community-led events but you got to build it first it also helps level up. the playing field um yeah oh, which is yeah. important because when you think about your weekly meetup um it, it probably is a diverse group of people and you have people who want to just show up to roll star wars dice mm -hmm. like that's why they got into destiny that's what they want to do and then you have people who have already read a couple of articles about whatever meta deck won the previous weekend's event and they put it together on tts and they've played it 20 times and they brought it to to the weekly meetup night um and games with those two types of people aren't usually fun for anybody <laughs> yeah uh, and so changing the format helps level that playing field so that everybody's kind of reinventing you know like nobody necessarily has an edge just because of their level of, ex of experience well right i mean that's obviously not true like the decisions that you make in the game uh, yeah. are influenced by your level of experience but at least it's it seems more fair mm -hmm. um so that's that's been very helpful i think uh and before I get any further, Matt, you got a shout out. Morgan, oh, the Morgan, Mr. Nice Guy. The league got me back into the game thanks to Matt and Diso. So, so. Oh, that's yeah, awesome, nice. man. Yes. That's uh, awesome. So, and I think that's excellent. I think there's just some great ideas, and and definitely uh, we've got to we've got to figure out a way to capture that casual audience, and, and I think just engaging your local your local areas is the way to do it. And um, I hope someday that. Uh, you know, same same way Kim felt, right? We were talking to us. I'm talking to myself in some respects. I wish I had the time uh, and energy to go out to my event every week and uh, actually help support it in that way. Um, and you've got to figure out. You also have to figure out what drives people to events, right? And I think this is where we we struggle on the competitive side. And this is where uh, we struggle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the major lull is because all the major competitive players have stopped really chatting about the game because they're waiting for the next mm -hmm. thing. Um, so what is it that can help drive these, uh, those types of players out, right? They, it's, if the weekly event is not really, you know, wetting the appetite of their competitive itch or whatever, well put. um, what is, what is that event that's going to get them going, right? So Galactic Qualifier is going to start back up again. Um, yep. Steve Cameron is going to come in the next week or so and talk about some some really good changes coming to those events, which I think everybody's going to be really excited about. Um, that will help. 
Yeah. But mm-hmm. Galactic Qualar Visit in itself are not an end-all be-all, and there's a lull, right? When there's no conventions going on, there's no Galactic Qualifiers. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and is it near you or not? Like, So, right. depending upon where that convention is, well, it's unattainable for me to be able to get there. So, yeah, right. what do you do? There's a Galactic Qualifier going on. So, yeah, you're <laughs> right. You have to... What else can I do in my... Or what else kind of events could a community be doing to draw in more competitive play? Not chase away casual players at the same time. Right. And a GQ is... is It was early on a destination event. I think it's not so much anymore. It's a regional yeah. destination. It's not a... You know, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to fly from Florida to go out to LA to do one. That's not going to happen unless nope. you know, I'm also going to Disneyland and make a vacation out of it. <laughs> but right. uh, I would go two hours up to you know Tallahassee or something. You know, that would be worth mm-hmm. it. Um, what so what is what is that next thing? Right, there's been a lot of talks out there. Um, Team Covenant's been uh, probably the best so far in making a. Uh, destination event and it seems like they're uh, not only do they have their name and their brand kind of behind what they do um, they're like their draft championships really kind of I don't want to say it's inventive because I mean in a way it is I guess but it's it's still standard draft rules they're just doing it a lot in a day Um, but they seem to have a a good buzz about it and of course their prizes are Mm -hmm. are unique to them and they've created them all themselves and they're nice and And they're they're nice. nice right um so in but a you way, you said it, Jason. They ha- they have a name and a brand, which I think helps tremendously. Like it's a very respected brand within the community. Sure. And so that carries a lot of weight with it for that type of event. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I was trying to figure out how I could get out there. Right. So. And that and it's a casually driven event, right? Who's there are very few like, I mean, draft is you can be a competitive draft player, but there's a lot more, there's a lot more luck involved, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, in a draft than it is uh, than there is. I mean, there's there is draft skill, but uh, you know, there's somebody you can draft the magic combination of cards, and all of a sudden, you know, they're playing Yoda Hondo in a draft. Um, not gonna happen. <laughs> not gonna happen. Uh, but what else? Like, what other what other things? Like, I mean, I, I kind of dream of a day where there are these. You know, d- there's a destination style event for Destiny that's really engaging is getting your top players out there that's maybe not nationals or regionals or worlds or even um but what's going to get them out there right uh you know you can kind of go one way or the other on whether a cash prize is is the draw i think that will get the big competitive players out there i think depending upon where it is i mean you and i uh assisted with a cash tournament last summer Mm -hmm. um and it was i would say predominantly still local players that came to that mm-hmm. but um, it was a, it was but, a, but it but it brought it got a lot the of region. interest like yes. it got a lot of buzz it got the region which i think is is key um it just has to be how do i put this <laughs> it has to be run effectively yep um because we did see that tr- try to spawn at um gen con and it, it didn't work out so well so it it mm. really and i think that that turned other people off, I think, from necessarily trying to start it. I don't think it was the fact that there was a cash prize involved. I still think that you could find a way to run that event effectively and have it work just fine. There were other politics involved in that, I think, that that yeah. caused more issues than the fact that there was a cash prize involved. You For can sure. still do something like that. Um, and I know we debated on the show, is a cash prize the right way to go for this type of, of game? Is that and for some people that drives them, and other people it doesn't. So it, you, you have you're going to still cater to different play types and prize types. Some people want want the effort, you know, and maybe FFG will support a few of these, or maybe there's some extra, you know, goodies laying around that are that would be enough prize support. Um, there's the team events that what was that the Kessel Cup that they had that had a really cool trophy. So if maybe you're fueled by trophies, mm-hmm. so it's. That's a big question mark. I still think there's room in the community to try to do a cash prize. It just needs to be done correctly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not that into into cash prizes. Um, yeah, I probably wouldn't go, but um, that's not a huge draw for me. I think it draws a probably a slightly more competitive crowd than me. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't really feel the need to spend money to definitely not win money Um, and I think it also 
uh, I don't know. Anytime that you mix money into it, it, it can it can change the game a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think in maybe not the best way. So yep. I personally prefer, and, and I know that <laughs> not a lot of people are super into the FFG price support, but I personally, like, that's the kind of stuff I'm into. Mm -hmm. I think they could do better with it. So sure. like this year, this most recent regional uh, saw a four-speed alt art and an Ahsoka alt art. Those Ooh, are two that cards are gonna... that are about to rotate out. And four speed is awesome, but Ahsoka never sees play, <laughs> you know, and, and she's been in the card pool long enough for them to know that she doesn't see play. So mm -hmm. I think they could be a little bit better about what uh, what cards they choose to to use for that kind of stuff. But um, other than that, like I, I think of those little tokens as as mini trophies. And um, I know there's been some discussion uh about the cash equivalency of those and is it worth it to win them and sell them but for me i have no interest in doing that um mm -hmm. honestly i'm just going to keep it in fact i should have sold my second four speed map that i have from from store championship season uh but i i haven't yet <laughs> i need to i guess because i definitely don't need two of them but um i just i hang on to that kind of stuff which, by the way, I did mean store championships, not regionals, when I talked about Ahsoka and Force Speed. But yeah, I gotcha. But yeah, it's they... almost like that. It's almost like the support is like a set behind. Like if they brought it out a set sooner for those types of events, it would have made more sense. It always mm -hmm. seems like they're a couple of sets behind. Like, oh, let's give you an alt art card of one from way long ago. Yeah. Like line them up a little bit, but and I think you're right, Matt. I think that's. Um... I, I team I, I, again I, I mentioned team covenant but like they've got some great looking deck boxes people like that i mean you may have to be creative in the prize support that you're that you want to have for your event because depending upon what level you want to have level of player i guess i should say mm -hmm. it's it's an interesting problem and and i wish i i mean i personally don't have a lot of experience with other competitive ccgs to kind of benchmark myself to see like well what what is destiny missing right i mean of course going out there and getting you know your more casual players are going to want packs for prizes or want to snake draft legendaries or whatever and then those uh, players who get full sets on release we lost matt oh. sorry i don't mean to cut you off but i was staring at his picture because i'm like he's holding his face very very still oh. and he just messed so he froze up right when i took over <laughs> that's funny that was funny i don't know if any of you guys noticed that but he did a fantastic job um while you bring him back on i was going to mention that uh the king the king raka had mentioned that he um had been trying to get things going in his area since 2016 and it was with partnering with a new shop that he was able to get some support and that's having stock providing table space that can sometimes be a struggle with an flgs um and he mentions how every store has magics, and it's hard to get them to gamble on another game. I think mm -hmm. he's totally right. So you got to try to find a, a store that's willing to do that. Um, and then he had mentioned too about thinking about doing theme sessions every week now that they, or every other week now that they have a proper FLGS. And I think, I think it is key. I think you still need one to partner with who's going to allow you the space and keep enough product. Um, but you're probably going to have to help drive that community to them to get the product sold, if that makes sense. But I For think sure. he makes a great... Matt, are you back or are you still frozen? Because that was the best frozen face ever. <laughs> I realized you no, you held no. it longer than seemed human possible, and then I started to get concerned. Am I back? Okay. So, I, <clears throat> before we finish this up, and I, want, uh, I would like to run this by you two and, and see what you think... Um, would there be? Do you think there would be an appetite for like a destination, destiny style event in which um, multiple formats were explored? Right. So you've basically, if you're going to a big event right now and Destiny's being played, you're going to play a Swiss style format, and that's just what's going to happen. But would there be an appetite out there for 
I'm going to spend two days. I'm going to do nothing but Destiny, but I'm going to get into a big Swiss tournament that may have a cash prize or may just have a bunch of box prizes or whatever. And then, uh, you know, if I get cut out of that, then I'm going to jump into uh, either a win a box, small Swiss, or I'm going to do a draft. And then maybe we have a multiplayer event. Uh, and then, you know, maybe there's some sort of triathlon winner because uh, someone's played in all three events and now they're like the top rank you know, average overall, you know, is that something that would drive people to an event? And is it even like worth, you know, exploring that as a community? Because I know there, there's kind of, there was kind of a call to say, hey, you know, is, is there a destination style event that, that someone, anyone can create? And I know, um, Matt, you're kind of, you're going to one this weekend, I think is an early attempt at what that could be. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm actually curious to, I almost wish this show topic was a week later and we could talk about, um, afterwards. <laughs> right. But I don't know. We'll just I, bring Matt back. That's just that, that I'm just musing, right? That's kind of where my head's at. Like, man, if we had money and support, I think that'd be so cool, uh, for something like that, but it would have to, you would have to get a large number of players to come to support something like mm-hmm. that, to make it worthwhile. <clears throat> And that's hard. I mean, I think it's hard from a destination standpoint. With some, and even with multiple destiny events going, there's still that question of, well, what else do I do? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. can you do it in a city? Because we see this kind of stuff happen a lot at conventions. Because there's other thing happening at the conventions. Mm-hmm. Can you do it? Can you find it in a city that still has maybe some cool things to do within the city, and still do destiny? Do you expand it to like what Matt's going to that has? more Star Wars associated games with it. So Imperial Assault, um, Legion, that kind of thing. Do you, I don't know if you could I don't know if you could swing it with just Destiny. At this point in the game. Unless yeah. we can get all of Europe to come over. All 160 of them from the <laughs> Well there's But some... I think it's a great idea because I right. think I think that there's a there's a I think we can move that way. I think that's a great idea, and, a, and maybe we need to get the buzz in the community first about it. Because the destination's hard. That's money, that's time away from my family, mm-hmm. that's a hotel room, that's a flight or a car ride. So the end has to justify the means, I guess, to and get there. It's a lot of work for the organizers, too. Um, I know the the person who's organizing our, our Texas Galactic Open, it has just invested an incredible amount of personal time sure. and effort in organizing that um, in working with uh, different community leaders with each of the games so that he has TOs and marshals to run them um, in working with the venues, which he's switched venues multiple times <laughs> because, you know, trying to iron mm-hmm. down a venue for uh, a question mark number of people with a question mark budget is very difficult. Sure. Um, working with different communities and FFG to get prize support for it. Um, it's just, you know, it's a, it's an incredible amount of work. Um, so, you know, I'm excited to see how it goes. I'm glad to be able to help support the like inaugural year of it. Um, but I think, I think a lot of what people want to see is to have that kind of support, but not have to be the one to put it up because Absolutely. it's very difficult to have that kind of time, you know? So mm-hmm. I think everybody hopes that FFG will do something like that, which, you know, is is probably not practical for them. But right. mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Well, you, you raise a good point there, Matt. And maybe this is a call to action for us content purposes because we, next to FFG, if we all kind of band together and start promoting that type of, of thing, um, if we have like, you know, us with the chains keep, we're scattered kind of around the States. Do we have somebody that could be there that could help TO? Um, or do we have price support that we could help offer to give these types of events a lift? I think we have to start looking at ourselves next in line after FFG, us mm-hmm. and other content providers. I mean, we're, we kind of try to be the voice of the community sometimes. And like, that's kind of a good, if, if all of us are talking about it, then that gets the community excited about it. If all of us are helping support it, um, that is a community-driven event. I think that's the true nature of it, and that would be give the organizers a little bit of lift because we're helping promote it, or maybe we're giving them surprise support, or maybe we're getting them a TO or or one or two. For sure, mm-hmm. I think it's it's a definitely a labor of love, and you know, cash events also struggle with you know cost. 
Can you get a big enough yep. cash prize? Can you get enough people to come and pay whatever entry fee to get the cash prize you want? Or do you get, mm -hmm. you know, local sponsors? And is the game, the game's not even big enough to really garner a lot of local sponsorship. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a challenge. Uh, something. Or, even, or larger well. ones. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. still hard to get big companies to necessarily, they've got other bigger games that they can go support or, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge. We've we've we have personal experience with that challenge to yes. some respect. Yeah, no, it's totally it's totally true. And I, I mean, you know, who knows? It's it's something that I think uh, as the game progresses, it's going to need that because otherwise, this is the cycle that we're in with the way that FFG has got their um, OP set up. And unless Cascade Games comes in and does more mm -hmm. GQs frequently across the country, like we haven't even had one in in Florida yet, and we've got a large player base yeah. here. Um, you know, Texas has 17 of them, and Matt's been to every single one of them. <laughs> no, I mean, that, I mean that's just... In Texas. I'm currently okay with Cascade Games rotation. Um, <laughs> seems to be fine. Sure, <laughs> sure it does. Uh, visit you a lot. But, I mean, no, it's 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 all... It's all good discussion to have. And is there an answer? No. Is is there a direction we could go? Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to. We'd love to see more. Everybody just wants to see more. And everybody. And like you said, Kim, a lot of people are looking to FFG for that solution. And um, it's not going to come. It's from not going to come. Not from. Mm -hmm. Not for Destiny. Uh, you know, they would if if it started with X Wing, then maybe we would see it with Destiny. But I mean, even X Wing is yeah. just now undergoing a, a kind of a new. OP structure that's going to take them a couple of years to even decide if it's something they roll out to everyone yep. else or not. Um, yep. Which you yeah, know. what you see is what you get. I think at this point, this is mm -hmm. the this is the level of support FFG has, to, and I'm not knocking them in any way. This is how they've decided to promote their game, and that was their business decision. Mm -hmm. If we as a community want to grow up more than that, we're going to, have to take it upon ourselves to do it. Mm -hmm. And they're and obviously you know they're they're putting a little bit backing all around the Texas. Um, this galactic open Which is great. Uh, fan yeah. run event and and it's we, we see that every year ffg tends to have a card or two that they send out to these types of things they're like they're goodwill cards mm -hmm. right the executioner um and the hidden motive full arts um those are cards we saw that we saw those at nova a, a bit mm -hmm. i think we're, we see them pop up at you know team covenant and other sorts of fan run events so you know if if there's a lot more requests for those uh, on this kind of regional level, I'm sure they wouldn't send them to your local store. But uh, you know, if you get this you know, regional level event that's fan run, you know they're they're obviously um, they obviously want to support it in some respects. So, mm -hmm. but like I said, and get the conversation going with us content providers because yeah, yeah, we we need to hear what you think so that we can make that louder. Yeah, I think to circle back to the question you asked a minute ago, Jason. I think galactic qualifiers are still for me kind of that destination event. And I agree mm -hmm. that they have lost the status of destination event that they had initially. But the idea that I'm going to a place and for two or three days, like destiny is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be in the main event until I drop out of that. And then I'm going to join those escape pods and do maybe a draft escape pod, maybe a standard escape pod, mm -hmm. maybe a trilogy escape pod. If there's a group interested in that, whatever. Um, so I'm excited to see those get back going again. I know we've had kind of a drought of, of galactic qualifiers too, but I, I think that just is timed with the lull in convention season also. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I think those are really good uh, for, for competitive players in between competitive events. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the like height of competitive season seems to mirror the convention season for obvious reasons. So... It's like, yep. you know, all through January and in the summer, we have competitive events, galactic qualifiers, regionals, nationals, worlds, all of that. And then we hit this period where we're in now where no new set, <laughs> no competitive events. It just is like an unfortunate, um, unfortunate uh, coincidence that they all fall at the same time. But yep. um, I, I kind of have to look into that. And I, I bet the triathlon idea would be very popular too. Oh, I think so too. Yeah. And I think, um, I guess kudos to those other marketers almost that then produce new shiny games during the law and another popular one. Yeah. <laughs> because they went, hey, look, your stuff's really quiet over here. Look at this cool little thing we got. Come over <laughs> here. Come over here. Come to the dark side. We have cookies. So. <laughs> 
All right. Well, uh, I think it's a healthy discussion. It's something uh, we encourage every one of our listeners out there to at least keep talking about. Please let us know. You can always message our Facebook page or hit us up on Twitter or Instagram. Just let us know your thoughts about um, these types of events. Uh, uh, Say, look, Kim, Axel Clav uh, said he'd play Destiny for Cookies. Yeah! (laughs) I make good cookies, just for the record. I can bake. Um, So let's... Let's uh let's go ahead and jump in uh wrap up our show with our question. There can be no mistakes this time. So last week we asked with recent discussion regarding community driven destination events what type of event would encourage you to travel for this game. Um and sadly, like we normally have a huge response to these questions and um up until like 5 hours ago we didn't have any response to this question. Uh <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, at the at the eleventh hour, Todd Jared Wright uh, said that he has a hard time traveling for games. Uh, events like Worlds are just right. too far out for my acceptable time traveling away from family and budgets. Totally get that. It's, I mean, that's why you know we're in massive debt right now. <laughs> that's going yeah. places. I feel you, buddy. Yeah, like that twelve hour trip. That was rough, man. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't know what I was getting myself. Fun, but whew, that was a long drive. Um, at one time, however, I did consider traveling to the Covenant Masters Tournament. What really got me to consider it was the unique prize selection and guaranteed swag that came with your ticket. So that's critical, right? You know, you're going to pay, mm. if you're going to pay yes. 40 or 50 bucks, you want to walk away with something. That yes. is a great point, actually, that we did not hit upon because everybody loves feeling like they get cool free stuff. Right. Yep. Myself included. Um, um, the, the deck box token sleeves and character boards are truly drool inducing. Uh mm-hmm. I agree. They are flipping sharp looking. Yeah. So I mean, Team Covenant—they've got the resources and 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 time and um to to put those together, which is awesome. I mean, it makes me want to go out there and do one for sure. I uh, really wish Oklahoma were closer. It's pretty close right? to Texas. But go, go do that, Matt. Send us cool stuff. <laughs> it's it's actually very far from me. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> Texas is huge, so it still is like seven or eight hours away. So. That being said, um, thanks again, everyone, for uh, for tuning in this week live. If you're watching a show live, there's been some great discussion on the chat uh, regarding this topic in terms of getting new players involved and, and these types of events and how we continue to support. Um, if you watch this show over at YouTube, you can see the chat scroll up on the screen. Uh, and if you are just listening to this chat uh, via podcast, which uh, we know hundreds of you still do every week, uh, we really appreciate the support. You can go over to iTunes, give us a review, which would be really awesome because our reviews are like two years old. We've been around that long. Oh my goodness! Yeah, um, help us out. But that would be awesome, uh, Matthew. Thanks for jumping in at the at the eleventh hour. Thanks, buddy, Mister yeah, Nice Guy. Back again. Mister Nice Guy, always back. <laughs> thanks As, for having me. Um, so have it or Facebook. Hopefully, everybody can participate in this. We're going to get back to some some actual cards next week, uh, and answer the following question: Do you think an all neutral team will make a splash in the next meta? Ooh, let's think about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, thoughts and thoughts uh everyone thanks again hit us up on uh twitter facebook uh one of the three of us will respond to you um and otherwise you can just because we're there's no i in team well that's why we're all gonna the hollowed out part of the a is kind of an i if it's a capital also there is an i in destiny there is i don't know what that has to do you know (laughs) Everybody have a nice week. We'll see Come you back next, next week. Next week for more slapstick humor. <laughs> Bye. This has been the Chance Cube, a Star Wars Destiny podcast, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through gaming. Visit our website for all things Star Wars Destiny, including our price watch, meta tracker, and latest articles from the Chance Cube family. Find our latest videos on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit us at patreon.com slash thechancecube. Your patronage allows us to grow this program and help us give back to the gaming community by sponsoring events, giveaways, and supporting our own community building initiatives. This is Mike Hill, the voice of the Chance Cube. Thanks for listening. The Chance Cube is not affiliated with Fantasy Flight Games, Lucasfilms, or the Walt Disney Company.